Uh, Riesling, oh gosh, uh, one of the most fantastic varietals. Uh, it's it's great. Sm uh, small is love it because it's so easy to pair alongside with food. It's bright. It's crisp, especially with Texas served cold. Uh, Riesling is one of those fantastic varietals that really adapts well to several different types of uh, terroirs and it's very uh, representative of regions. Uh, whenever I'm thinking about Alsace, I'm really thinking about three places and that's, that's uh, Alsace, Germany, and Austria. But in regards to the whole world realm, I mean, it's grown everywhere. Uh, Australia, South Africa, uh, the United States domestically. Uh, Riesling is one of those fantastic grapes that it's all over the map. Uh, it thrives in cooler climates, but uh, depending on where you get the Riesling, uh, things like alcohol can vary between 7.5 7 all the way up to like 12 to 13, uh, depending on when you're gonna find it. Uh, my favorite place for Rieslings, it's gotta be Germany, although I do enjoy a good Alsatian Riesling. Uh, in regards to Germany, uh, I've been asked several times about remembering sweetness levels. Uh, there is a simple acronym that I like to remember, and please forgive the profanity. Uh, it's uh, K-S-A-B-E-T. So I remember that as kissing Santa's ass brings extra toys. Uh, K, first one is cabinet. It's going to be uh, the lowest requirement for sh uh, sugar and sweet levels within the grapes. Uh, S, that's for uh, Spätlese. Uh, A is for Ausschlese. B is for Bühne Ausschlese. E is for Eiswein. And T is for Trocken Bühne Ausschlese. Uh, as slowly as you go up, it goes from uh, you know, sugar, just a little bit of off dryness, all the way to the Trocken Bühne Ausschlese, which is going to be a syrupy, syrupy dessert style wine, very, very high in sugar. Good, good quality Riesling can be found in regards to, to balance of the wine. Uh, the difference I feel like between a, a $20 Riesling and, and the $50 Riesling would, would possibly be the, the selection of the grapes, they call it a selection of Grand Noblesse, for example, in Alsace, where uh, certain grapes are selected for, for noble rot, or uh, in Germany they call it Edifalege, um, or Edifalet. The, what makes certain wines so much more expensive than others is a lot of times you go back to basic business in, in regards to cost or uh, how much the land is or how, how well the wine is made itself. A lot of times when you're, you're paying for, for example, like at Spätlese, Ausschlese, those are tend to be just a little bit more expensive because it requires several trips through, uh, through the vines uh, to pick certain grapes. A lot of them are picked, for example, by hand, which is gonna be more expensive. Uh, the slopes, for example, in Germany tend to be pretty steep, so it, it can't be mechanized. So you have to kind of offset the cost by hand picking, which in essence will make it, you know, for me, a, you can usually taste the difference between uh, something that's, that's hand picked and cared for uh, as opposed to something that, or vine that's just vigorously shaken by a, a mechanized machine. So uh, in regards to, to something that is, is $20 as opposed to $50, it could be a range from, from cost, uh, from manpower, to the cost of land, to, um, uh, to the quality of the wine itself. If I wanted to get started with German Riesling, uh, first, I would kind of decide what, what type of wine do I like. Do I want it to do it in a dry style or do I want to do it in a off dry or sweeter style? Uh, if I wanted to do it in a drier style, uh, typically the Faltz region uh, has more of a dry style or, or even if you want to take it uh, to, to Alsace, those typically have, well, they can have some off dry nuances, but a lot of times the wine will finish dry. Uh, if I'm looking for an off dry or sweeter style, then I, I don't think it gets much better than the Mosel or Middle Mosel uh, in Germany. Absolutely fantastic wines, and that's when you're gonna get those higher level of sweetness. So if I was just getting into German wine, I wanted to try a uh, dry style. Uh, I think the Faltz is a fantastic representation of German Riesling. If I'm looking for a sweeter style, Mosel or even the Rheinheisen region, uh, absolutely fantastic for German Riesling. The cost for a, 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 a nice representation of a German Riesling, uh, it depends on how serious you want to go. Because you can find uh, 
pretty good Rieslings for you know 20 to 25 bucks. I think it's one of those, it's still slightly underpriced for the value of what you're getting from most uh, of these German Rieslings. You know, if you want something that's a little bit more archetype, a little more iconic, of course you're gonna spend just a little bit more of uh, the 30 to 50 range. But uh, if you're looking for something just as a nice introduction into the style of Riesling, then 20 to 25 is absolutely plenty. Uh, now, if you're in regards to storing it and serving it, uh, since it is a lighter style of wine, you're gonna wanna serve it a little colder, a little lighter. Uh, I would store the wine, if, for example, if you're ready to drink it that day, store it in the fridge. Uh, it's just a nice, easy place. Your fridge temperatures are typically in the lower 40s. When you pull it out, and it's, it's gonna uh, raise just a couple of degrees in temperatures. Uh, I enjoy my Rieslings right around the 50 degree mark. Uh, it's typically a little warmer than I think other people like it, but I, I think when the wine is a little bit warmer, I'm not getting the condensation in the glass. I can enjoy that beautiful bouquet that much more. It's that much more heightened. So for me, right around the 50 degree mark is where I like my Riesling. Yeah, Alsatian's typically gonna be a drier style of Riesling. Also, uh, what, what kind of characterizes Alsace, other than its high degree of minerality, it's also, it's a little bit higher in alcohol. Uh, the German, the German style of Rieslings are typically going to be between 7 and 10 versus Alsatian Rieslings. Those are the ones you're going to get up to 12, 12 and a half uh, for alcohol. So they're going to be characterized by you know, a high degree of minerality with also just that little bit extra boost in alcohol. Uh, Austrian Rieslings, uh, if I was going to, well, I'm not as well versed in Austrian Rieslings as I'm, I'm sure some of my other colleagues, but if I was going to look for a place to uh, start it would definitely be the Wachau region of Austria, producing absolutely fantastic mineral and high acid driven uh, Rieslings. A great representation of what Austrian Rieslings want to be. Uh, that, that blend of, of, of peaches and citrus together with the minerality notes uh, in both an off dry as well as dry different styles uh, are just a fantastic representation of that area. And I'm looking forward to experimenting more with Austrian Rieslings. <laughs> In regards to domestic Rieslings, uh, domestic Rieslings, I feel, are, are going to be set just a little bit apart from, uh, from the foreign style Riesling is because you're going to get just a little bit less minerality, a little bit higher in alcohol. Uh, I find the best places for domestic Riesling are going to be in that Oregon, Washington area where the climate is just a little bit cooler. Uh, but again, you're going to have, have the differences in the domestic where it's gonna have just a little bit less acid, a little bit more alcohol, and possibly a little bit less mineral. So if, if minerality or acid are things you don't like, uh, or, you, or you typically find yourself shying away from in wines, you want a little bit more of that, that smoother finish, that less of that, that battery acid rattling in your teeth <laughs> that you can get from a high acid wine, then uh, I think domestic uh, Oregon and Washington is a great place to get started uh, for, for the Rieslings. And you can find them in different uh, off-dry as well as dry styles all up along the, uh, the west coast, the northern west coast.